spoilers, 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 even if you have played Splatoon, if you have not completed the single player, go away, complete the single player, and come back. We'll be here waiting for you. I can't believe it. You paused us for an entire two weeks? Really? Jeez, we had to sit here. We couldn't even go and play Splatoon. <sighs> Just joking, people. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Splatoon. Single player. Spoiler alert. Spoilers! Spoilers! Have I said spoilers enough? Spoilers! <laughs> and it's not really spoilers about the story, per se. It's spoilers about things that happen in it and how good that final boss battle is. <laughs> Oh, it, it's spoilers, period, because I have all the sunken scrolls, so spoilers! Yeah, and I love how the s sacred scrolls reveal that, wait a minute, this is a post-apocalyptic world? It's so colorful and happy! <laughs> Unlike Bethesda and all the other companies that have made wonderful post-apocalyptic worlds. It's gray and drab and everything's horrible and everything's trying to kill you! And then there's Splatoon! We're so happy! <laughs> We battle for fun and honor and our chosen idols. And nothing's fatal because we have respawn points. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's another thing we forgot to mention last time. Water. Really? Water? <laughs> it makes sense, though, because we're made out of ink. I love how even Marie goes, yeah, even though we're squids, we can't swim. <laughs> mm -hmm. I really enjoyed everything about the single player and... How each level basically taught you a trick that you can actually use in the multiplayer. And I liked the puzzle solving and, you know, the tricks that you use to get through the level and the things you have to do to find the sunken scrolls. Because you can play through the level really quickly and completely miss the scrolls. The one thing it could have used was better enemy AI. I hear that a lot. <laughs> Even, you know, the seaweed octolings, which are supposed to be the most aggressive ones, were not that difficult to take out compared to playing with real people. Ah, and going back to the multiplayer real quick, when I was talking about customization and other creatures, octolings, for the love of God, add octolings. <laughs> it's only been rumored for forever, and it only happens to be in the game code. <laughs> but we're already through all the free updates, so... I would have to pay for that update? I won't mind, but... <laughs> well, maybe they'll tie it in with the, another set of amiibos. Hmm. Yeah, because there's rumors about the fact that Callie and Marie may get their own Maria. Maria's? <laughs> yeah, my brain is working really well today. <laughs> that Callie and Marie will get their own amiibos. I'm hoping for an another set of three. And Jed would be the most logical choice for a third, but I wouldn't mind a Spike amiibo. Or uh, Captain Cuttlefish. Spike. <laughs> You're like, Spike. <laughs> you desperately want a Spike amiibo, don't you? Maybe. Especially if it would allow clothing upgrades. I would love to have some pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, biker shorts just aren't her thing. <laughs> uh, the puzzles are... Wonderful. They really make you think. One of my favorites is the ones where they were, where there's that level where things are constantly wiping away your ink, and you're like, dang it! Oh, yes. The little indestructible things that erase all of your ink. Oh, I was also referring to the things that paint the other colors automatically, like those big sweeping arms that go across the ground. Oh, the sweeping arms and the giant robots that basically put down a splash wall wherever they go and just rain down ink. Though I also really enjoyed the puzzle levels with the giant sponges you had to shoot your ink into. Didn't you have to deal with them at some point during like the last set of levels when you were trying to find all the kettles? Because that was another thing is even the overworld finding the kettles was exploratory. And it's a bit of puzzle solving too because you had to figure out how am I going to get up there? <laughs> How am I supposed to? I, it, it, it. I love how it's just fun to move around, too. That's something I forgot to mention in the multiplayer video is it's just fun to move around. <laughs> it is, and the controls are really comfortable. I do use motion controls. Mm -hmm, same here. Just all the little things, like you said, the sunken scrolls is a great way to reveal the story without having to have a bunch of cutscenes to reveal the story. You can 
peruse it at your leisure. Mm -hmm. I was just a little disappointed that the last Sunken Scroll wasn't more story, but I should have known better because boss battle Sunken Scrolls are always ones to take to Sheldon to get new weapons. I also like the fact that there's little secrets and stuff hidden throughout the overworld. Well, specifically the shed that Captain Cuttlefish has, where if you look inside it, you can actually get a hint right off the bat that Agents 1 and 2 are actually the Squid Sisters. And I didn't see that until Lux pointed it out to me and then I had to go look for it because I'm usually scattering ink around, which makes it kind of hard to look at the shed. Though apparently I figured out who Agents 1 and 2 were sooner than he did. Spoiler warning once again, I figured it out during the last battle, right when about the halfway mark, where suddenly the music changes and it's like, oh my god, those two are the Squid Sisters! This so rocks! <laughs> also, I almost always ended up at that particular section still holding on to a special, your special weapon. Things, so you're all glowing and your hair's all waving in the air and you look really badass, especially when the camera cuts to you and I'm like, this is so Super Saiyan levels, man! I am so gonna kick your tail! <laughs> Yeah, should have taken time for a screenshot at that point, you know. Well, I haven't played that recently, and they didn't really have a nice... Well, you could screenshot at that moment, but they don't have a nice storage system like they do now. You can just store screenshots without having to post them. <laughs> yeah, so anyways, I originally thought that Agents 1 and 2 were deceased, that they had tried to handle this whole Zapfish thing and failed. Yeah, with the way he says things at the beginning, it does feel that way. But then when he says, yeah, I have to introduce you to Agents 1 and 2, and we'll, like, have a barbecue or whatever it is he says. Picnic, I forget. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute, they're alive? <laughs> Just preoccupied doing shows. <laughs> they're apparently pre-recorded because you go into Splatfest and there they are going, hello, this is Splatfest, and then they're out there dancing at the same time. You're like, what? <laughs> Yeah, so that had to be pre-recorded. But I think it's so unfair that they have to sing the entire Splatfest. Don't they ever get to go play? <laughs> and back to single player. So basically, for me, I wondered at that point, and I thought, hmm, maybe? Because there's two of them? But I knew for sure when Agents 1 and 2 first show up to assist you, after Captain Cuttlefish is kidnapped, because their icons, even though they're all, you know, sunglasses and mask and everything, the coloring was right, and the speech patterns were exactly Callie and Marie. So when I first saw those come up on screen, I was like, oh my god, Agents 1 and 2 are the Squid Sisters, this is so awesome! Yeah, I was completely fooled by their disguises until the music started playing during the final battle, which is awesome. I got through it in like three tries, maybe four. Because I remember thinking after being going, it wasn't that hard. And then there's Ember. <laughs> it took me a lot more tries than that. I kept getting hung up at the battle right before the Squid Sisters interfere. I could get two of the needed hits done to progress to the next level. But I was too busy dodging and I'd always miss the third one and you have to get three hits in a row or it resets. So I would spend way too much time on that section. <laughs> and it was funny because I was actually complaining to Lux on a phone call. I'd taken a break from the final level. It was like my third session of sitting down to beat it. And then after the phone call, because he called me mid-battle, I went back and that time I won. <laughs> Ah, uh, and the wonderful credits. I like the way they did the credits. You get to ink things to see the credits. It's really nice. Also, the song that's playing is really nice. Yes. I think it sounds a lot like a slowed down version of the Splatfest Plaza theme, including having some of the same lyrics. I want to say all the same lyrics, but um, I don't speak squidling, so I can't verify that. Yeah, it's actually a much different song. I happen to have a copy of the soundtrack. Cough, cough. Nintendo, here's a hint. Release it in America, for the love of God. Please, we <laughs> want to give you money, Nintendo. I want this soundtrack. We basically are going, shut up and take our money. <laughs> Why are you not taking my money? <laughs> <laughs> and I suddenly saw that wonderful gif of someone trying to shove money into a CD drive, going, take my money, Internet. <laughs> and all the kids out there going, what's a CD drive? And I'm weeping in the corner. <laughs> Uh, remembering that day when that kid asked what a Game Boy Advance was. He was asking what a Game Boy was. <laughs> and I turned to Ember and go, I'm not that old, am I? 
It just was not a pleasant day. <laughs> I go, look at these things. And the kid goes, what's this? And I go, that's a Game Boy game. And he goes, what's a Game Boy? <laughs> <laughs> and now back to the single player. <laughs> yes. Because so much fun and different levels, though you do get to play some of the maps that you do play in multiplayer. So if you've already played those maps in multiplayer, you have an advantage. And something else we should talk about, even though I don't think you've done much of it and I've only dipped my toe into it, the fact that you can have more single player fun if you happen to get a copy of the Amiibos. The um, first set of Amiibos, the Squid Boy, Squid Girl, and the Squid. Though they're pretty prevalent now, thank you Nintendo for re-releasing those. <laughs> yes, because for a while they were incredibly difficult to find. Lux and I got our copies during the it's still difficult but not impossible time frame. Because uh, when the game first released, basically if you didn't pre-order them, you weren't going to get them. Yes, and I would have only gotten the Inkling Girl if I was choosing based just on appearance. But the Squid Amiibo, which is only available in the 3-pack, is the one that unlocks music and therefore I had to buy a 3-pack. I need to finish playing through all of his challenges so I can unlock the music game. Because it's actually a game too, it's not just the sound selection menu, it's also a mini game. It's a rhythm game in a game about shooting squid. And I haven't played with mine at all yet, and that's part of the reason it took me so long to finish single player mode. Same philosophy. Single player is always going to be there. Online support can disappear, or online players can disappear, even if there's still support. If nobody's playing online, that's done and over with, and I can't level up anymore. I need to magically find some more free time to play more Splatoon. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. I've... I've been magically stealing non-existent free time. Oh, this place is a mess. <laughs> yeah, I know that feeling because I should be playing Splatoon, but I also have this other wonderful game, Fire Emblem Fates. Yeah, that's a wonderful game. I call it shipping. <laughs> no, no, these, these two look wonderful together. No, 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 no. No, better yet, if I put this one with that one. Oh, wait, we're talking about Splatoon here. <laughs> Yes, you can do a Fire Emblem one by yourself later. But Splatoon, <laughs> single player, Captain Cuttlefish, Squid Sisters, Agent 1 and 2, DJ Octavio. And the question, were we actually fighting DJ Octavio every boss battle? Because he has that green cross-shaped scar on one of his tentacles, which Every tentacle that we see reach up and grab the zapfish to power the machine has that scar. And you can replay levels, but because you've already rescued the zapfish, there are stuffed zapfish for you to rescue, which you can also see in the shed. Oh, yeah, I remember running into those playing through one of the challenge levels. Yes, and rescuing the great zapfish makes a change in your plaza because now the great zapfish is wrapped around the tower. By the way, it looks really cool at night, though the eyes are kind of creepy dead compared to the amount of movement that the rest of it has. <laughs> oh, and we forgot to talk about the plaza during Splatfest. It's very, well, we talked a little bit about it, but it's very pretty and there's a bunch of neon signs with more posts on them and it's great mm -hmm. and fireworks that burst into posts but we were trying to avoid spoilers in the last one and since you know splatfest only comes up about once a month even someone who's played multiplayer may not have had an opportunity to play splatfest so this is the one with all our spoilers including sunken scrolls because it's not just, okay, this takes place in the future, humanity's been wiped out. Look at the size of the Inklings. We have confirmation through the Sunken Scrolls that Judd was originally a pet cat of a scientist, which means he's mm -hmm. probably about the size of a normal cat. And he's also about the size of an Inkling. So you know when your Inkling has an NZAP 89? That's probably an actual zapper, because that's about the right size for a child. <laughs> That reminds me that it's actually been confirmed that all the Inkling's weapons are made out of junk that they've found. Well, if you look at them, they're very scavenged. The sloshing machine, parts from an old washing machine, a lot of the early weapons that you can get look like old super soakers with junk glued on them. And think about the rollers and 
the presumed size of the inklings based on the presumed size of Judd, those could be regular household paint rollers. Especially those ones where you can pump paint into the back of them and they will um, continuously roll out paint. You don't have to re-dip those brushes. Mm -hmm. And let's not forget the sunken scrolls. Kelly and Marie, even though they are called the Squid Sisters, are cousins, not sisters. Also, it looks like Spike used to be in a band with DJ Octavio and Captain Cuttlefish. <laughs> I need to get more sunken scrolls in my game. <laughs> because there's an album cover, and it kind of looks like they're all there, and wow, apparently it's hard to be a fallen idol, because Captain Cuttlefish basically lives in the sewers, even though it's really pretty down in Octo Valley. <laughs> Spike has his little business on the side, and I kind of got the impression that he just is always in that alley. So, yeah, my favorite thief is apparently homeless. And he eats the sea snails? Yes. You can even see one of them going, no, no! <laughs> and I want to say that there were more sea snails there before my first Splatfest, and then, like, the number of them went down when I could start selling them to him. Uh, and if you can't tell by the information we said in the Sunken Scrolls, Judd is really freaking old. <laughs> Even though he was put in stasis, none of the Inklings can remember a time when he was not the judge. And there's also a Sunken Scroll showing a cat that looks exactly like Judd, a bit thinner, but exactly like Judd, judging a contest. There's so much in this game. Nintendo did a wonderful job on this game. No wonder it's doing so well, and people also want, in a sequel, to have more personality for the Inklings. But I think the reason there's not a lot of personality in Inklings is because Nintendo wanted everyone to put their own personality on the personal Inkling they picked. Yes, which is fun for a multiplayer, but it would be nice if there was more personality overall, that we had more defined personalities for Plaza residents, and maybe have more in-game plaza residents that you could interact with. Yeah, other Inklings other than Callie and Marie. Mm-hmm. And other people you can talk with besides the three shopkeepers, Spike, Captain, and Judd. I mean, there's a train in the background. Maybe in the sequel we, we will be able to ride that train to somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And we do get to see cars whizzing by um, in the background on some of the maps. Mm. Oh, yeah. Maybe in the sequel, that bridge for one of the multiplayer maps will actually be finished. <laughs> that would be nice, or though we're done with free updates, it would be nice if it actually updated to being finished. <laughs> well, that's another one of my favorite maps, too, because you get to walk over everyone. If you do it right, you can sneak past people and just drop on down them and rain ink fire on them and go, yeah! <laughs> mm -hmm. Should we talk a little bit more about the boss battles? I mean, it's a little bit, oh my god, oh, it's yeah. still the sets of three. You know, okay, three mm -hmm. hits, and then the battle type changes, three hits, battle type changes, three hits, you win. So it's still the standard video game threes. Yeah, but the way they do it is each boss is a puzzle you have to figure out. Like the one boss where you have to paint up the side to get on top of him after you had him jump and splat his face into the floor. <laughs> and how each time it breaks off, it makes it a little bit different, a little bit more difficult. Like the panels start moving, or there's less panels, and it's just that's a really clever thing. Mm -hmm. Or having a sea of ink that you have to get across. That's like the first boss battle. So the boss battles are really, once again, more puzzle-based. And it's interesting to see so much puzzle-based work in what's essentially a shooter. Because it's a really creative thing. It's kind of like taking some inspiration from some other games, like Portal 2, and that Portal 2 was based off of, where they were playing around with how different inks would do different things, and how this allows you to use your ink to crawl up walls in certain ways, or hide in your ink. Like, the bad guys can't see you if you're in your ink. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Like It was part of my trick to beating the boss where it was basically a turret thing in the center of the map and you had to hide from it or it would shoot you. So you had to sneak close to it so you can shoot it in the weak spots it had. And then you had to jump across that to get on top of it to do it. And there was like a little mode around it of ink that you couldn't go, go into. I just remember hiding my ink a lot going, come on, rotate, ignore me. There, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> <laughs> See, and I was circling around behind it. <laughs> And I would put down enough ink to hide in, in case I went too far and it refocused on me. But I would work on getting behind it and getting out of its line of sight. 
think I did that too, but there were times where I'm like, I'm not moving. Turn away. Turn away. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Just that was like a lot of creative things you could do in that. And then there's the challenges you get from the amiibos, which I haven't played through enough of, but they basically give you different weapons than you have standard, and then you have to figure out what to do with those weapons. And then the final battle is just so awesome. Because it takes everything you learn and makes you think about, okay, and then they add something new on that, and you're like, okay! <laughs> <laughs> and you're having to figure all this out on the fly because it speeds up over time. In the beginning, you're dealing with one thing, and then you're dealing with another thing and another thing, and in each iteration, everything happens faster. So you have to come up to speed. And then there's the wonderful music, especially when Kelly and Marie interrupt. I love their song. <laughs> and I just love that moment. Seriously, the first time I got to that, I just let the music play and I got up and danced. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was kind of dancing in my chair going, oh, come on, we're going to kick his ass. Uh, and that's one of the reasons I went out and found a copy of the soundtrack. Because <laughs> like, I need to have that song on loop. <laughs> and speaking of their songs, yeah, the Inkling Sisters actually just speak gibberish. There's no official translation per se, though Nintendo did release actual lyrics. The lyrics are gibberish, even in Japanese. But kudos to everyone who's gone out and done their own translations or picked up on things that they've heard. Because thanks to Lux now, all I hear on one song is red, green, red, green, yellow. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> uh, no, I don't apologize. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Not so sorry. <laughs> well, I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on Splatoon single player because we certainly did <laughs> <laughs> thanks for listening if you enjoyed this please consider subscribing and or leaving a friendly comment below want to know more of what's going on you can check lux out on tumblr and deviantart really like lux's art and would like some high quality versions or maybe some of your own he is currently accepting commissions and also has a patreon all links in the description